What is up, y'all? I feel like <clears throat> I'm still out of breath. I just got home from work. It was like the busiest shift of my life. I've been the busiest since yesterday. Um, we had like an impromptu sort of secret Santa kind of thing. Um, very highly unorganized, but somehow everybody still kind of came together and mostly pulled it off. But I had to go get my um, gift stuff yesterday before work, and then I went to work, and then the shift started, and I instantly got a migraine that left me partially blind through most of the shift, <laughs> confused and disoriented, and I had a hard time talking, and uh, I was tired and feeble. And then one of my friends at work was celebrating her birthday at that night and everyone was going out and I didn't want to disappoint her because people like they really want everybody to rally for the birthday. So I wanted to be there for her and she was there for my birthday. And so I rallied and I got through it. It was fun. And then I got to the bar. I actually got, had the energy to go home and change. So I would look cute and I went to the bar and I walked in and I was like, oh my God, there are so many great looking men here and they're all so in shape and well dressed. I'm so glad I went home and changed. And I think we all know where this is going. It was gay night. So every single one of those cute guys was awful limits for me so but it was a really fun night out and I was glad I went but then I got home and I was like burnt a little toast I just had nothing left in me so I did not do the secret teachings of Jesus video um my apologies to you and to Jesus and also um yeah so today I was still a little bit tired from the migraine I went to work and we had a bunch of people that had like big events tonight that they couldn't be at work for and so we were short staffed and, but we didn't realize it until like right before we opened, we were like, oh wait, this is all happening. They're not showing up. They're not, they're not late. They're not coming. So we had to like set up their sections really fast and like take over their tables and the reservations for the night. But I was on a private party that I had to set up. It was like for 20 people. And so I was like at the very opposite end of the restaurant, the restaurant, which is like the size of a city block. Having to like run back and forth and try to like set this thing up. And then the 20 people were so nice, but they were so like needy. I, it took probably six days just to get their <laughs> initial 20 drinks to them. <laughs> and then it took them so long to order because every single person had like an array of questions and they wanted to like sit and ponder about it for a while and they needed me to like hold their hand and like help them decide and even though I kept like featuring these items to the whole group it's like everyone would keep continuing to ask me about the same things I just said and I was just like I was honestly getting violent <laughs> I was like please like nobody let me near the knives I am so violent right now oh my god and I was like dripping sweat it was taking me so long to get this order that like multiple people for the staff had come in to check on me because they were concerned and worried. <laughs> because they were like, that order should be coming in for the party, right? <laughs> and I'm like dripping beads of sweat and oh my God. And they were so nice and they, but they were very like, it just like my ankle is swollen. <laughs> That's how, how much they needed. I have never have foot pain after. And right now I have an inflamed like elephantitis ankle. <laughs> Oy bay. So, but it was a great night. They tipped me more than their autograph, which was nice. And I'm super, super grateful. So it all worked out. And we're here for our energy oracle forecast for the week. And I'm glad y'all let me get one of those stories off my chest. I used to open with my personal stories a lot, but I thought that it was making the videos too long. And I thought that, I don't know, maybe people were not uh, super interested in, you know, and with the algorithm, it's like if you don't start talking about what the video is about right away, it buries you. And it's it kind of works against the videos. So ugh, I don't know what do you guys think. Do y'all like hearing me tell about my, my real life? Um, yeah or nay. Um, okay, so we're here for the Energy Oracle forecast for the week. 
where we take a look at the week ahead, the next seven or eight days, and we kind of look to see what the spiritual weather is going to be like. Right now, the first card up is Embrace. So it's so funny because in my own personal reading in my, with my Kabbalah cards, one of the cards, Mim, it literally means like, you know, try to be easygoing. Take life as you find it at the moment. Just embrace whatever's in front of you. If it is like the night I had tonight, it was like, <clears throat> I was very blessed, but it took taking an ass beating to get that blessing. And I'm sure the ass beating that I took last night and being able to stay in like an upbeat spirit <laughs> throughout it, it was literally like all the Kabbalistic points. It was like physical pain. There was like all kinds of different situations going on that night. And I, I maintained the mood and I, I rallied for a friend and you know what I mean? And so it's like, I embraced it. I just went with it. A lot of people, if they get a migraine, they let it take them out. And I'm not saying that sometimes that is not even, it's not even an option. Like sometimes they really do take you out. But sometimes you can just use your willpower to suppress the pain if you just embrace it and let it happen. And so I've been able to have a very functional life as someone who gets migraines and I don't get them a lot. And I think it's because I didn't fight them and I didn't let them overtake me when they came on. Um, otherwise, you know, you miss out on things and I hate missing out on things. And so a lot of times I'll just suffer through it, right? So in Kabbalah, when we can embrace discomfort and know that in a way we can use it to help let the creator use that to evolve us, to strengthen us, to heal us, to make us even more um, invincible, you know, not that we are, but you know what I mean? Like, I like to think of the Mandalorian as a metaphor. You know, here's this, this sort of like, um, what is it, a, a soldier for hire, what are they called? Like, I'm blanking right now, because it's like on the tip of my tongue. A mercenary. He's like this mercenary, you know, and this from the sacred, you know, cults or not cult, but like a um, group of these warriors. And he's a badass, but he's not winning most of the time. He's getting his ass kicked and he's driving around in a piece of shit. <laughs> He doesn't have luxury and, you know, things are tough and he doesn't always win. And he does in a way, but it's not straightforward. It's not clean. It's not, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And he keeps going, and, but he keeps getting the job. He keeps getting hired and it only seems to add to his legend, his uh, strength, his larger than lifeness. It adds to his badassery. If the characters that have it easy and like nothing bad ever happens to them, they're not badasses, right? They're they're not known for being, you know, like legends, right? So <clears throat> embrace whatever life's throwing at you and just try to like, you know, dodge the curveballs where you can. And then if you're in a great moment, and, and it's happy and it's serene and it's fulfilling and it's all going easily and flowing, then really embrace that and really appreciate it. And hopefully that will perpetuate more of the same, but you know, life throws you different weather, right? And you know, sometimes you're in a sucky situation where it's harder to remind yourself that there's a blessing attached. And, you know, like tonight, like I was getting my ass kicked, but I knew that I was at least getting paid for it and that, you know, there's a good chance that I might do pretty well that evening. Um, and then, you know, it's not, never guaranteed though. You can always get like stiffed or whatever, but overall I had reason to hope. So I embraced it, you know, and it turned out to be a better night than I, I would have imagined. So that is really great, but sometimes you can't see the blessing attached to the situation. Sometimes you're just in the dark of shitty shit shit. <laughs> shit, up shit Greek without a paddle. It fucking sucks. And you're like, I don't know what anything is, why this is happening. I don't see anything good attached to it. 
And those are the times where you really just have to like choose to turn to the creator in that moment and ask for strength and support to have hope and certainty that the situation, even though you don't understand what's going on in this dark moment, something else unrelated can happen wonderful down the road or seemingly unrelated. So, you know, things can be used in your favor. So like, you know, there's the, the, the phrase, like everything happens for a reason. That's a bit general. Everything happens because of a reason. That's fairly true. Um, everything happens for a purpose can feel not always true, but maybe it is. But everything can have purpose. Everything can potentially serve a purpose if you choose to, 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 to make it that way. <laughs> like, find that purpose. Find what it is in that difficulty. Because sometimes there are situations where there's no redeeming quality of that event, right? But there's something about that experience that could foster something in you that is a strength or a, a compassion or some, some note, some frequency within you that you couldn't have had otherwise. So, you know, just embracing where you're at is the thing that unlocks that magic, that juice for the miracles, because that is the, the act of faith and surrender. And it opens us up as the vessel. Because the more we have affinity with the creator, the more we will align with the harmony of the, the cosmic flow. And that's when you're in that like manifestation zone, the miracle zone, right? And so the creator embraces, right? We live and move and have our being in the creator. Um, the creator is not you know, in separation, the creator is whole, it's unified, it's one, it embraces, right? So if we are not embracing, if we are rejecting and not at least accepting it, what is in front of us um, and, and meeting that with an honest, open eyes, right? Then that doesn't have affinity with the light because you're in separation, right? You're, you're separating yourself from that. You're not embracing. And so that that throws your resonance off. So it's like embracing, you don't have to like it. You don't have to like being in a sucky situation. But just not fighting against it alleviates suffering. Like pain is not avoidable. It happens in life. But suffering is a choice. And suffering happens when you cannot accept what is and you're fighting against things that you can't change all right so i mean this could be a week full of all kinds of things and embracing everything is going to make it a more fulfilling week than if we do not Okay, what do we have here? Awakening, oh my goodness. So it's like the more that we embrace the moment, the more that the creator can reveal to us through our intuition, through that divine inspiration, the awakening of, okay, I, I see where I need to change. I see where my perception can change. I see where my behavior can change. I see my pattern coming up. I feel myself getting triggered. I see the resentment. I'm so hostile right now. I can change this. I'm awakening to it. And so the more you embrace what's going on that's showing you all of the things that give you the magic juice, because remember, when we sacrifice our ego, our need to be right when we are, you know, hiding behind, you know, something in our, like we're afraid, you know, we're afraid of our, the, the big shadows, you know, and, and we're, we're hiding out. 
um, we're insecure, like all of those things in our ego, we can, we, we can rise above that, just let go of things, let go of fears, let go of doubts, let go of grudges and, and all those differences, you know, and, and really start to embody a different way of thinking and being and perceiving that's more closer to the higher self. You know, we, we climb and we reach for that then it's like the more things are gonna to begin to unfold. Our messages have been really, you know, building upon that theme recently. So it's, it's, it's I don't know, I'm like, woo, feels like building um, suspense of something fun happening. Like getting closer to Christmas, right? When you're all excited and you're like, oh, Christmas. And you're like, it's like when you're, you know, growing up and you're a kid and you're like, Christmas Eve is the most exciting because you're thinking like, ooh, Gonna get presents tomorrow. I don't know what they're gonna be. Like it kind of feels like that kind of energy right now. Um, cycle, amazing. So we are ending the old cycle and we are awakening into a new cycle. And so embracing this moment in the in the void to to tweak our perceptions where we can let go of the old cycle and realize that we're not in that old cycle anymore that the the past is gone let bygones be bygones we're I'm a different person now we're different people now this is a different storyline we're in a different timeline right we've jumped timelines so embracing this new cycle right being in this moment to allow the awakening to happen right it's like these two characters don't look like they're jumping right out of bed they're like oh, I'm awakening <laughs> oh Oh, it's all becoming so clear, but it's funny. You know, it's like you're you're in this moment of the in-between. So embrace that as you start fine-tuning and, and your perception starts coming into focus. So as life starts to offer you these um, experiences and situations that can cause familiar patterns to arise, you're like, oh, Oh, I'm awakening to these and I'm taking my time and I'm choosing differently now because this is a new cycle, right? New things can start. And so again, it's just like readjusting the perception like, oh, you know, I can think about things differently. This is a new cycle. I'm starting over. I'm starting fresh. I'm not having that same mindset. I'm not letting that same baggage that's built up that's like triggering me and like I'm like, you know, blowing a gasket over it. It's like clear the decks. Just start over. Start fresh. Um, embrace, awake, the, the awakening is happening. Lots of excitement. You may, may feel a lot of creative inspiration, but I think that it's like the divine inspiration is coming through. The more that we act on it and the more that we begin to embody this guidance, it's like the more clear it becomes in our, in our intuition and the more the guidance will come in. And so the more we act on it, it's like the louder the vault, like it'll be coming through, it'll be coming through clearer. The signal will be clearer. Can you guys tell I'm still like, I've still got migraine. It also affects my speech. So I've been nonsensical <laughs> the last few couple of days. Um, and also the more that we offload, you know, those, the old baggage, the old patterns, the more like clarity we have and the more clear our intuition is, it's, it's less skewed by our pain and our fears, right? And our, our biases, humanity and imagination. So again, like moving forward thinking about this new life that you're creating, right? Using your imagination to decide like this, this is like this new cycle, you know, this is this version of you, the life, the thing that you're bringing into manifestation, right? This thing in the middle. It could represent a, a dream or a relationship or, you know, some kind of situation here. But it's like two sides of you are like looking at this and going like, what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about this thing here? And so it's like imagining like what kind of world are you creating for yourself going forward? Because we're in this new cycle. And so it's important to plant seeds because this is the seed level, right? Our consciousness determines what the quality 
of the seeds are that we're planting. So our consciousness is the seed level. So we want to be in a state of unity and abundance and sharing and thinking not just, this was such a good point brought up in, by one of my Kabbalah teachers, but it was like, are you wanting to change? Like, are you wanting to be with closer to the creator and change because you're wanting to alleviate your own pain? Or do you want to be closer to the creator and change because you want to be a better person? Because you want to be a better person and have a, a better influence on the world, right? You want to make the world a better place. You want to do something for mankind. You want to share your light with humanity um, and not just hoard it all for yourself. So just so you'll feel better, right? So stepping into that perception, it makes you in your consciousness a greater vessel of sharing the light, which I just thought was profound because it's like, being a vessel, like um, receiving the light for the sake of sharing or receiving for the self alone. And it's like, sometimes I think about it in terms of learning and, you know, gaining a bunch of wisdom and not sharing that with others or not embodying that and putting it into practice. But yeah, just like um, the seed level of consciousness around why it is that you want to change any reason that you're that you're trying to be spiritual and change is great anything that gets you there but it's like from there let's retrograde a little bit why am i here why am i trying to grow am i simply trying to bypass the pain to alleviate the the pain the pain is here to teach me something. It's here to show me something. It's here for a reason. It's trying to tell me something at the very least that I need to pay attention to. So we can't just squash it down and get rid of it and like move past it because on a metaphysical level, it's been sent to you to evolve your soul on some level. So it doesn't mean that you have to be in that painful state for a long time. It can be the moment that you really truly embrace it. Maybe you'll get what you need to from it, right? It's miracles can happen instantaneously. Um, but sometimes the reason that they don't happen or they don't appear to happen is because of our perception, not because we're not surrounded by miraculous things happening every second, right? The flow of miracles coming from the creator is constant. Um, it's only us that closes ourselves off to them. And either because we're not aligning with the light or because we're receiving miracles that we're not perceiving. So think about your growth and the vision for your life going forward and the person that you want to be going into this cycle. And then also challenge yourself to ask or to stay aware. I mean, because it's like we're all this way, right? We're all trying to change so we don't have so much pain. But then we're all trying to change because we want to be a better person. And we want to make the world a better place. And it's like a little mixture of all of them at any given time, right? Nobody's 100% bad or 100% good. You know, you can be a, a prophet and a saint in one second and then like be an absolute dog and a heel the next minute, <laughs> then back to a saint the next minute. So it's your consciousness in that second, right? In that, in that moment. And so when we slip into those moments where we're getting self-centered and just like in a pity party or being obsessed with the change just so we're not feeling the discomfort. It's like, ooh, am I missing something that I'm valuable here by not embracing this moment? And then my consciousness, right? Am I wanting to do this because I want to be a greater vessel of sharing for the light for others, right? If I'm a better person, then that means that I am kinder to others. I am not as impatient you know, with others. I am not flustered by others. It's like that, that would be wonderful to have that kind of like genuine presence and also just maybe not feeling like all the things inside that make you feel like, <sighs> that'd be nice. Um, 
surely would. So humanity, imagine going forward uh, what you want this year to look like, what kind of person that you want to become and why. Um, and then, you know, what, what are your dreams and your goals and like the unique talents and gifts that you have? Like, how are you sharing those with mankind? Um, in what ways and, or what ways, you know, do you, do you want to, uh, want to start exploring ways you can share with mankind? It can be very small scale. It doesn't have to be like on a big scale at all. Mankind is like the people around you. Um, we are all mankind. So it's, you know, it boils down to, you know, small acts starting small within, you know, your immediate surroundings. And then you can trickle out from there. <clears throat> Ooh, I, um, one thing that I like to do for mankind that's really fun, um, I never talk about it, but, um, charity water, uh, you contribute, donations to charity water and you like they they're the ones that dig wells out in um like third world countries that don't have like available drinking water and so i find that very satisfying but it's um it's a really fun website the way they have it set up too because you can like have your own profile and um you, you like see it like your donations over time like in your profile you can see like how many people that it's actually impacted and helped overseas and things. So that's that's really fun. I highly suggest that. Just as something easy, like, I don't know how to help mankind. I'm too overwhelmed. You can help some people through Charity Water. Um, and it is, uh, it's very satisfying. So you're like, whoa, I'm helping someone across the world get water. And they don't have to walk, hopefully they don't have to walk miles and hours and hours for it. So that's pretty cool. All right, y'all. Well, I hope we have a good week ahead. Um, I feel like we will. I feel like it's about awakening and embracing the process and embracing this new self we're becoming, embracing new cycles, fresh starts, you know, letting the past go, letting the past narratives go. Um, and just because we've always had phobias and this and that doesn't mean we have to carry them around anymore. You can just get over it, right? <laughs> you really can. Um, I have before about certain things. Um, I don't know. Just try it. Just adopt a little, uh, just enough crazy to, <laughs> to be dangerous. All right, y'all be good, but not too good. Ciao.